Flattering angle. Hey honey bunches, how are you going? Um, time for another vlog. Lost to say, I hope you're doing okay. Um, I'm just heading off, it's about quarter to 11. <sighs> um, heading off to do a food shop. I took Merle into puppy class this morning, which is very exhausting. Such a privilege and wonderful. It's like 20 puppies in this big hall and you're in groups, so sensory overload. The adrenaline that got me through the first few classes being like this is amazing but it's the last of that socializing class we'll be going to anyway so i made it through and now i'm off to do a food shop and otherwise it's just quite a chill weekend so i hope you enjoy this weekend vlog it's nice to be back chat to you soon <laughs> Here we are, it's 12, a gorgeous day. Feel like we're having some summer weather, finally. Super still and sunny and I'll show you some of the sunflowers that have come up. I definitely have one giant Russian I think that's just shooting for the sky. It's over six foot feet um, and it's on a raised bed so it, it looks even taller. And some other sunflowers that I gave to people in our area that have started popping up, which is very exciting. I think being such a leafy suburb, a lot of people don't have like such a good full sun spot, which since growing them this year myself really realised that they like just gobble that sunshine up and that's what makes them like actually thicken up. We've got such a great position where they pretty much get sun all day, whereas other people who have planted them in like a semi sunny spot, they're like very thin and like a, this type of sunflower when ours are more like up here. What am I doing waffling on about sunflowers? <laughs> I intend to pick some things from the garden though today. Got a big fat juicy cucumber, um, some radishes that are ready. They're like French ones, so they're... <sighs> Regret that. Um, little cylinders. And there's a zucchini. And then I want to pick some Malabar spinach, which grows in like a vine for a sort of spanakopita to type situation. Because we have some dill and mint to use up. Yum. How is it the 23rd of January? This won't be an original comment, but when did the new year happen? Um, but yay for the inauguration finally happening. I feel like we can all just a little bit, you know? Hello in Australia. One down, one to go. Scott Morrison's latest comments on Australia Day are just sickening. He said that the day the 12 ships arrived in Botany Bay, quote unquote, that it wasn't such a great day for those guys either. Likening seasickness to a genocide. <sighs> Yeah, he's more like benign than Trump, but he's still completely incompetent. And it's like, who are you Who are you representing? Just rednecks and racists, I don't. Anyway, not gonna give him my energy. Merlin's finishing up a nice juicy nap after sensory overload at puppy school. He's grown so much. He's got like a proper head. <laughs> like he's, he's a little dog already. This morning I actually had the first sleep in in a while. I think my body just like, demanded it. What we've been doing for a while now is I've got up at 5.50 every day. Yes, 5.50, not 6 because he doesn't let me get to 6. 5.50, let him out for a pee and a poo and a big drink and then put him back to bed and try and get another hour of sleep, which has worked out to be more of like a doze. But today, I think my body was just like, give me the sleep. So I slept to 7.30 and I'm pretty sure he was doing an occasional bark for the last 10 minutes and then mum got up. Or she does like the night shift, putting him to bed at like 10 but she slept well, so all's good, and I'm feeling well rested. Although I've had a reoccurring dream lately, just a little lovely nightmare of being um, shot to death by Trump supporters. <sighs> Thank you very much. REM sleep. Yeah, it's like I'm trying to return a library book in this like makeshift hall thing in this alternative creepy American town universe, and then there's like 
people queued up inside this hall in like a cattle cart situation and there's like Trump supporters everywhere and I'm like actually I don't need to return this book I'll just go and then they like block the exit and then they open fire and um it's really stressful <sighs> you didn't really need to hear that but it's cathartic to share and hopefully I don't have that again two's enough thanks today's gonna be pretty chill I want to yeah make some good food finish my book I've been reading so much lately because there's a lot more time for just supervising Merlin, I suppose. And my current read is All of Mabel and Me, which is so good. Don't don't knock me and don't think it's just a semi-famous guy who like cashed in on the we're all at home needing a smile 2020 situation with his two dogs and got a bit of internet fame. It's actually such a good book. So moving. Like he is clearly a dog person <laughs> and an introvert, which I feel could potentially make it more intense um so half the time I'm like on the verge of tears and then just like laughing my face off because he knows the personalities of his two labs so well and hearing about their lives is obviously very enjoyable for someone who has a little baby lab so um I am loving it it's like so good and no apologies about that also reading for like half an hour after like a meal um I feel it's good for my digestion just still not 100% about I'm still not 100% with that um malaise is that how you pronounce that word it's sort of just my daily reality patches of it here and there but I think it could take a while to feel better and I don't feel like the advice of just try to relax is very good because I've been trying to do that my whole life just an anxious person so um yeah reading helps and having patience and seeking a bit of professional help from next week I actually can't wait for that <laughs> And try and slowly reclaim the joy of cooking which to be perfectly honest feels like it's been completely robbed for me from like september onwards last year not ideal when a big part of who you are is like based around cooking and making recipes food has just felt like fuel a lot and not really a pleasure so i'm still tr slowly trying to reclaim that i'm not one for new year's resolutions but i have been thinking since new year about some things that I would like to try and do in the next year. So I thought I'd share them. The first one is to wear sunscreen every day, no matter what I'm doing. Living in Australia under a hole in the ozone layer, ideal, not. You would think that I would be doing that already, but since a young age and like sun smart messaging, I don't really, well, I don't sunbathe or like seek a tan. And if I go outside, I like seek shade or you know keep it to like a 20 minute situation but even then you know backs of my hands which are already tattered from cooking gardening a million little um teeth and paper cut like marks from melon and um yeah they can do with some love so even though it's a bit of a hassle and um i'm quite like very minimal when it comes to skincare that would be a wise move so i'm gonna try and do that even in winter be mean to do that since i heard ali raisman does it and she lives in like or did live in like, massachusetts so no excuses Phoebe since you live in a much milder climate. <laughs> Another goal for this year would, is to like attend even just one like a professional pooping class or there are some like pooping sessions in the park type things that you can do where you just take your hoop and people are bringing their hoops and are in like Princess Park or some park in the city and just hooping and maybe learning from each other in an informal setting because hooping has been a very solitude solitary thing and um i kind of plateaued on my enthusiasm for it still for the life of me can't like unlock like body hooping it's all very hand based so i have a feeling if i saw someone else do it or just got a few tips i could unlock some more moves and find more joy from it a similar thing to that these aren't very serious fyi but um is to feel more confident rollerblading i still like actually find it terrifying and like I'm gonna fall over and just a bit painful. They've redone some railway lines near us and next to them they've put in these concrete paths and they're super smooth so I would love to be able to just like pop in some headphones and rollerblade along them because that would be like 2k's easy up and back and they're super smooth and we don't have really ultra smooth surfaces in abundance but I don't really feel comfortable going to like industrial areas um, by myself. There's a way in. Another goal of mine is to consistently shoot on my film cameras. I've actually shot about four rolls of film documenting like Merlin's arrival and the garden and just other stuff I got up to since December. And I'm really drawn to the medium because you can't see what you've taken after you've taken it and there's such a wait between when you take it and get the film obviously but just in our such fast paced like social media driven world I think it's a really beautiful and like healthy 
more healthier sort of image based way to record memory experiences and memories. Another goal is to expand my vocab. I mean, I feel like we are all feel like this. I can't be on my own, but at 23, there's still an embarrassing number of words that I just don't quite know what they mean <laughs> or would feel confident enough to use them or they're not really in my, not really grabbable by my Wernicke's Brockers area <laughs> in my brain. I did this consistently in like high school so I could be better at like writing essays and make them sound a bit more profesh and as dorky as it was I just made like a, a word list database so that's what I'm doing and I'm doing that from mainly just reading books and or reading articles online just saving words and really you only need to like look up the word once save it maybe look at it once more and it's in there because it's always ha it always has been in there you just haven't felt confident enough to like cement what it means and then my last sort of intention I suppose is to is to not feel so controlled or defined by whatever health stuff is going on and just try and feel less embarrassed by it a bit ironic since I have a platform and know from experience that a lot of people are always going through what you're going through and you're not defined by like your physical health but um, when it's all like new and when it's all new to you it can yeah just bring up a whole bunch of stuff so I don't know try and handle that with more grace and be more open about it and not feel like it's taking away from who I am yeah something I've thought about and I'm just gonna keep in mind going forward okay I think time to go wake up the mill and maybe do some training <laughs>
edge there was like a smoky feel outside. Not a fan. Mildly triggering. I looked it up though and it's just better not. That are wafting our way. All controlled. But I would love a warning, you know. I'm all for like text messages for these sorts of things, but that's not a thing here. So anyway, all good. Merlin's now back asleep and my mum has popped out. So I have the kitchen. Calm space to myself. So I'm going to um, make some food with this produce. Look at me, little kitchen gardener. Uh, I'm going to use this Malabar spinach and the kale in a like potato, hmm, what am I thinking? Like a spanakopita situation, but instead of phyllo pastry or any other pastry because the gluten-free options are pretty pithy, I'm going to use a crust recipe which I have adapted from the first mess. She makes a galette out of it and it's made out of chickpea flour, polenta, mixed herbs, nutritional yeast, salt, pepper, vegan butter and a dribble of cold water. The recipe for this will be in an one more but vegan I've got coming out super soon for another recipe. So I'm gonna use that, make a galette, spanakopita. It's probably blending French and Greek and yeah, but <laughs> you do what you gotta do. Then I have some radish and cucumber and some dill to use up and I bought a quarter cabbage. Also have some homegrown spring onions from a friend which I'll be putting in that spanakopita type thing. Um, I'm gonna make like a cabbage slaw salad thing with the radish. I bought some good vegan mayo for that. This brand, very vegan, Naked Byron Foods. They do like flavored mayos, FYI. And this one, oh, it's sweet mustard. Like delicious on anything, like okonomiyaki burgers. Super good. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna start with that, see how I go. I'd love to make something sweet to nibble on, you know, but I'll just try and not have too many expectations. <laughs> Mel and snoring, that's a good sign.
five. They have dinner sorted. What a feeling. Um, and I might do two things. That means keeping like a, a Merlin journal, early dog years type of thing. So I need to do another entry in that. And I'm also going to write down notes from a couple of books I've read. These two, one of which is a library book and might not be like the done thing, but my method of whether it's just a word I want to commit to my vocab or more often uh, notes from the book, whether that be for like in a non-fiction sense committing some important history to my noggin or maybe there's a bit of inspo in a book for a story I'm writing. Yeah, I don't know if it's like ethical but I do dog tag and then just on the page and then feel like you don't even need to underline or do anything else. You can just skim read it and your brain will go, oh yeah, that was the interesting thing. And then once you've done it, you can like go back and find those little subtle dog tags. And if you want to be even more sneaky, you can use your fingernail and underline. <laughs> just a little like, I just do it on the side if there's a, like a, a bit of paragraph that I want to make some notes from. And then by the time you've returned it and it's sat on the shelf pages together, those little marks you really can't see them so that's what i've been doing lately because no matter how many times i want to sit down with like a notepad and a pen and make notes um that's a bit of flaff and accessories i don't always have with especially for dog aside to then sit on you merlin was pretty good on that walk we went somewhere new which i think he's always slightly better behaved because everything's a bit more overstimulating so he's more like he's less confident to sniff every Scaric, but I don't think there's much logic to that. He's definitely getting more confident meeting people and dogs on walks. Um, he still does the occasional like pedal, and because he loves to be on his back, it's like wee like a fountain. The part where he sort of loses the plot um, in terms of walking, I know he's like a baby, so I'm not expecting you know anything amazing, but um, is when we're like 100 meters from home. He just wants like <gasps> pull, and Nelson the golden retriever does that as well. Not like pull where. You know, I would be being dragged along, but he like picks up the pace. And Merlin's clearly so tired, so I don't know if it's like, oh, thank goodness we're home. Um, anyway, does your dog do that? Like, pick up the pace in the last block type of thing?
Hey, it is currently 23 Celsius and escalating sharply. Um, and I want to go out again, so I'm hastily putting sunscreen on. Um, I'm gonna go for a teensy little bike ride to shoot some pics of the sunflowers which have come up um, so far around the Nay Nay. If you're new, I decided randomly to give everyone sunflower seeds in my suburb. Make a little festival of it, a little a little nice neighbourly thing to do. So I want to do that and also film them. Not very conducive with Merlin. We met a staffy and a Dalmatian on our walk this morning. And this might sound a bit tough, lovey, but I'm, I've been eager to meet those bigger dogs um, and for them to sort of put him in his place because he can get quite annoying um, and just want to play and play and play and not really realise that other dogs might not want that. And at puppy school, he's kind of learning it three weeks in. Um, but you know, I'm just a bit nervous when it comes to going to dog parks and like letting him off. I don't want him to just like be the annoying kid in the playground who doesn't take no for an answer. Um, and this Dalmatian gave him a little nip on the head. <laughs> it's all puppy fat. I think he's fine. But yeah, he got the message so I wasn't too, too sympathetic with him for the sake of the long term. Um, I finished my book and it, it's just like 11 out of 10. I'm like tearing up one minute. This is All of Mabel and Me by Andrew Cotter. Um, like nodding along, like just fascinated, just so impressed. It, it's such a good book and you would not expect it, but just don't knock it till you read it because it's bloody brilliant. Okay, off for a bike ride. Properly. What? I've just ducked out to an op shop for a bit of me time. Um, I'm at a rather large op shop. It's about two and then it's a toasty day but it's not actually too hot so mum and I are going to take Merlin to the beach again probably around 4 or 4.30 and I planned on listening to my current audiobook Anxious People but yes my phone's not making that happen so let's listen to some moody music instead. very humid now. That was actually really good. I'm so glad I went. I went into Savers with a bit of a hump feel because um, I was like, I don't even know what my style is. I'm ready to like mature it up, but then clothes just need to be comfy for me at the same time. So there needs to be a balance. Um, anyway, the vibe that I sort of came away with today is British fairyland illustrated author, middle-aged woman who lives by herself in a cabin, maybe with a dog in the middle of nowhere. Um, and it's winter in the UK. <laughs> we'll just go with that. Similar to another cardigan I have, which you would have seen, except I think I like this one more because it has speckles of pink and a lighter green in it. Just a little shawl cardi. This is really nice, like a thick cotton with a little bit of elastane in it. Um, and it's like got a, a nice texture and feel. Sort of polo. The purpliness of this blue polo and then these are a little bit around the waist but with a belt are perfect um cotton shorts <laughs> super happy with those um and then i found two books brooklyn which i've never read i'm getting major deja vu though i haven't read it and then anyone seen the tv show of this i haven't but i've heard good things about the book and i, I kind of feel like the story will be my more cup of, will be more my cup of tea in book form just looking through it, there is so much dialogue. 